When I started this project, it was two days before my wife and I's anniversary. I wanted to make her something special, and I didn't come up with an idea until the very last minute. At the time, it looked like I was going to have to head back to the office soon after a year or so of working from home. Meanwhile, she'd just started her first writing job and would be working from home indefinitely, and she'd been saying how she'll miss having me around all day. With that in mind, I decided to make her something that can sit on her desk and print out cute messages that I send her, and since her new job is as a writer, instead of just printing out the notes, I could make it look like a little quill is magically writing the messages Harry Potter style. Throw in the fact that it's our paper anniversary if you're old-fashioned, and I was sold on the idea. I call it Ye old Fax Machine. This is a thermal printer from Adafruit. Thermal printers are one of those things you may not know exists, even though you probably interact with them all the time. They would print out most receipts at stores. Unlike normal printers, they don't require ink or toner or anything. Instead, the paper they use has a special coating on it that makes it permanently change color when it's exposed to heat. The print head is made up of a line of a bunch of small metal pins, and as the paper is pulled through, the printer is rapidly heating up individual pins to darken a spot on the paper, then allowing them to cool before moving the paper forward again. Because there's no consumable ink, thermal printers don't have any big moving parts, which means the printer can be made nice and small, perfect for this kind of project. I'll be controlling the printer with an ESP8266, which is a little Wi-Fi enabled and Arduino compatible microcontroller. To actually receive the messages, it'll be using MQTT, which stands for MQ Telemetry Transport. The MQ is apparently an old IBM project from the 90s, that doesn't matter though. It works like this. There's a central server acting as a, the middleman between publishers and subscribers. In this case, I'm using a free service called Mosquito because it didn't require any setup, but there's a lot of other services that can do this. The publisher device sends a message to the server along with a topic name, which is just some arbitrary label. Subscriber devices, in this case the ESP, connect to the server and say, hey, send me any data with topic X or whatever. This can happen for as many publishers and subscribers as the server can handle. As the publisher sends messages, the server looks at the topic attached to those messages, scans the list of connected subscribers for ones that care about that topic, and forwards the message on to just those. This allows for many different types of devices to use the same server without all of them getting all of the incoming information. Obviously, the printer is going to be the most fun part of this project, so I'm going to work on that first. Adafruit's printer came with a driver that handles printing text and even images, and they conveniently provide Arduino code that lets you print a short test page to make sure the printer's working. Sounds simple enough. Oh my god, stop. Jesus Christ. From what I can tell from Adafruit's documentation, this is not what the test page was supposed to look like. I tried a few things to fix this. It keeps happening. No idea why. I'm going to move on to the servos for the quill, because quill, it's late and I'm pressed for time and I want to feel like I'm making at least some progress. I'm going to use these two little servo motors, which are about the cheapest you can find because a feather is about as light a load as you can get. The reason I'm using two is because I want the feather to look at least a little bit like it's riding, so it, it can't just move back and forth from side to side. I'll have one servo doing that, which will hold the feather up using some spare brass rod I had left over from my drink temperature monitoring project, but I'm adding a second motor just in front of it. This one will move almost in sync with the first, but will actually be jumping to alternating sides of the first servo's position. This should cause the feather to rotate back and forth a bit around the point where it's held by the first servo, making it look a little more chaotic and hopefully more realistic, although I'm obviously not trying to fool anybody here. The servos will be controlled by an Arduino Nano. I unfortunately can't use the ESP that's listening for incoming messages because it's controlling the printer, which causes the code to pause and wait for the printing to finish, and since I want the feather to move back and forth as it's printing, I need to continually send new positions to the motors. Since I can't multi-thread like you could on a normal computer, I'll have the ESP send a start and stop signal to an Arduino Nano and let it handle the position of the motors. That turned out to be pretty easy to set up, so I guess it's back to performing an exorcism on my printer. Turns out I just attached one of the printer's data lines to the wrong pin on the ESP, which was just sending out garbage. With that fixed, I could finally test the whole setup, and to my great relief, everything seems to be working fine. Now I need to figure out some kind of enclosure for it, so I'm not giving my wife a bundle of cables. But this took a little longer than I expected, and it's getting a bit late, so I guess it's time to hide it from my wife and throw in the towel for the night. 
All right, it's the next day and I have a more secure method of keeping what I have so far a secret from my wife. Time to make the body. For the sake of time, I'm just going to make a wooden box using some spare poplar I had left over with a little platform in front to hold one of the feather motors. The other motor will stick out from the front of the box through a little hole. I'm going to skip over a lot of this since there's not too much interesting to say, other than that I used this neat little corner clamp I just bought to hold the pieces together at a right angle for gluing. I'd never used one before and it's a little big for the size of box I'm making here, but it was pretty convenient and I'll definitely be using it in the future. The trickiest part by far was cutting the slot in the lid that the paper would come from. I wanted it to be as thin as possible, and my coping saw blade would have been too thick, so I drilled a bunch of holes as close together as I could and removed the wood in between them with a chisel. It could have gone better. Nothing a little sanding can't fix, or at least get presentable enough for now. Leave a comment if you know a better way to do this, I'd love to swap this out for a better version later. With everything cut, I gave it a few coats of polyurethane. As a side note, I've been applying polyurethane and letting it dry inside my apartment forever, and I just found out the other day that the fumes are toxic. So this time I'm doing it right and wearing a respirator and letting it dry overnight outside instead of on my desk, and it'll be protected from dew by a high-tech waterproof enclosure. Now that everything's dry, I need to attach the lid. I need to be able to open it, and I initially bought some small brass hinges to match the rods that are holding up the feather, but now that I have the box made, I'm realizing there isn't really a good arrangement for the hinges to work, and the wood's a little too thin to screw through anyway. I ended up going with magnets instead of hinges, held in place by some little enclosures I 3D printed. There's a matching pair on the underside of the lid, and against the inner wall of the box, and it holds the lid in place. They didn't turn out to be quite as strong as I'd hoped, but I'll add another stronger one later when I have more time. Alright, now we're getting somewhere. All the different pieces are pretty much done, but they need to be assembled and our anniversary is tomorrow, so I need to make this quick. I printed a stand to hold the printer up against the top of the box, did a quick test to make sure it all fits, then glued in the servo motors. Then I realized that the inner servo motor does not stick out far enough for the little rod holding attachment I printed to clear the front of the box. Don't have time to print anything else now. I guess it'll just be the one servo for now and I'll fix it later. Next, gotta glue in the printer stand and get the electronics inside. I definitely don't have time to solder everything nicely, so I'm just gonna solder the ESP since it doesn't have headers, and transfer the rest to a smaller breadboard that's just small enough to fit in the box. To prevent any accidental shorting on the ESP, I'll also wrap it in some of the scrap paper from back when the printer was possessed. Kids, don't do this at home. Finally, I just need to throw on a little cover I printed for the external motor, then attach the brass rod and the feather. Okay, it's ready. Time for a final test before I give it... And it's printing blank. F okay, turns out the crappy 5 volt power cable I had can only do 1.5 amps, which is not going to cut it. No worries, I'll just cut that in half and give it to her wired up to one of my variable power supplies, I guess. Something else to fix later. With that though, it's finally working, and just in time for our anniversary. Okay, it's a couple days later, our anniversary is over, and she's seen and liked the gift. Now I can put on some finishing touches and fix the stuff I didn't have time to do before. First things first, I've bought a new 5 volt power supply that could power up to 4 amps, which should be more than enough, and I'm going to expand the hole in the back and insert a female power jack so the whole thing can be easily unplugged and moved around, and I don't need to cut up the power supply. When I gave it to her, the inside of the box was so full of wires that I couldn't actually fit a roll of paper. I only had like six inches running over on top of all the wires so I could do a demo. Since that obviously won't work long term, I 3D printed something to hold a roll and keep it away from the electronics. A quick side note about superglue. If you're gluing two things together with only a small gap, don't use too much superglue, and put it on the stationary piece, not the piece you're sliding in. That will make the glue pile up on top, and you won't notice right away, and you'll coat most of your fingers in glue, and your day will be ruined, and the label on the bottle will shame you. Since my hands were already all gluey, I added a third stronger magnet to the lid so it'd stay in place a little more securely, then I took all the electronics off of the breadboard and soldered them together to save space and have more reliable connections. Although, I left the motors and the printer unpluggable in case I ever need to swap them out.
I printed a longer connector so I could attach the second motor to the feather. Then the last bit of effort was all software. The Adafruit driver for the printer splits your messages to wrap across multiple lines for you, but it doesn't try to avoid splitting them in half, which can make the messages a bit hard to read. A small tweak to the ESP code fixed that, so it sends the message to the printer line by line and takes spaces into account to avoid splitting words in two. I also wrote a quick Android app to publish MQTT messages so I can do it from anywhere, and then I was ready to call the project done. Oh, and the thermal printer came with a single roll of paper, and since I used most of that troubleshooting, I figured I'd buy a spare roll or two in case we ran out. I just went on Amazon and bought the smallest quantity of rolls I could find. After all, this isn't going to be the kind of thing that's going to be used all day every day, and the rolls last a really long time, so I didn't want to buy too many and just have them sitting around taking up space. That would be super annoying. There are still a few longer term things I'd like to add to this, specifically the ability to send images since the driver already supports bitmaps, and it'd be fun to draw a little doodle on my phone and send it over. I also plan on moving from Mosquito to a private MQTT server, uh, possibly AWS IoT, so I can send messages without worrying about anybody else listening in. I'm on the fence about whether or not that'd be worth putting in a video, so if you're interested, leave a comment and let me know. Anyway, the code, 3D models, and a circuit diagram are in the description, along with a parts list and some other helpful links. I had a lot of fun on this project and I hope you enjoyed as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.